The Dallas Mavericks are now 12 and 13. They're 3-7 and seven in their last 10 games. They just lost to a Pacers team that wasn't even trying to win, really, without their head coach. Rick Carlisle wasn't even coaching. And Jason Kidd says this team isn't built to play defense. Well, that's easy. We're built to play offense. We're not built to play defense. But that's all right, because at least if they can't defend, they can play offense, right? Come on now. It's the Mavericks. It's Luka Doncic. Well... Not exactly, because they're a bottom 10 offense, a below average defense, and they're just very mediocre right now, which for a team with Luka Doncic, Kristaps Porzingis having a better year than last year, and a new head coach, that's very, very disappointing. I'll just put my hand up straight away. I was wrong about Dallas. I made a video a couple of weeks ago talking about how I think their ceiling might have raised because Porzingis was playing really well. Luka was about to come back. They weren't even actually winning a ton of games at that point in time, but I thought they were going to start to figure it out. Their shooting was going to be better. Luka and KP were going to link up and it was going to be nice. However, however, is this a blip on the radar? Are they going to get back to the Dallas that we've seen the last couple of years? Or is this a year in which they just struggle to make the playoffs, the play in, any of those things? Before I talk about that, if you could drop a like in the video, that would be much appreciated. Subscribe to the channel if you are new, or if you haven't already subscribed, that would be cool. Not going to waste any more of your time. I'm going to start with a positive, kind of. This is kind of a positive. Dallas last year were actually in a very similar situation record-wise. They were 11-14 and 14 after 25 games, as opposed to this season, where they're 12-13 and 13 after 25 games. And similar to last year, they've had some issues with injury. Last year, they had probably more broader injuries, but this year, well, they've had one that's mattered the most and that is Luka Doncic, who's missed four games. Paul Zengas has missed about six games. And in those four games, without Luka, they're 0-4. In those four games, without Luka, they've got the third worst offensive rating in the league, only ahead of the offensive juggernauts that are the OKC Thunder and the Detroit Pistons. So yeah, as we kind of already know, this is not groundbreaking news. It was the same last year. It's the same this year. And until they get him some drastic help, it's going to be the same for the foreseeable future. This team sucks without Luka Doncic. But the real question is, are they actually a good team with Luka Doncic in the lineup? Because even when he's been in the lineup, well, they haven't exactly been fantastic either. Let's start with the defense because I talked about it before, but Jason Kidd did say that this team isn't built for defense. And with the last few years, it, that's been true. And it is true. They aren't a team that is built to be a top 10 defense. They're not a team with an elite defensive player like the likes of Golden State or the likes of Phoenix and all these other teams that are top defenses led by top defenders. And they have a few glaring issues. One of them is Dwight Powell, who was their starting center. Dwight Powell, yes, their starting center. And this would come from the fact that I don't think they want to play Porzingis at the five because of potential injury concerns. It just leaves them with two guys at the four and the five that aren't overly switchable. Porzingis as a four obviously isn't that switchable. I know Anthony Edwards thinks he's the greatest defender of all time and the best rim protector he's ever seen, which he's, he's a pretty good rim protector and he affects shots there. But if you've got him at the four and if you've got him rotating out to guys, which you've got to do as a four and even as a five in today's NBA, well, it makes for a team that isn't fantastic at rotating onto shooters, particularly if a better team likes to move the ball and create open looks. That's why they've struggled against some of the better teams in the league because their defense just gets cooked quite often. Doesn't help. Luka Doncic hasn't been great on that end of the floor. He hasn't looked fully in shape. And I'm not saying because of his weight, which a lot of people have been talking about. He has had ankle injuries. He's coming off a very, very long season. And I'm going to talk about all of that. So I'm not going to get carried away now, but he hasn't looked the best and defensively he hasn't been great. So really in general, you've got two guys that are probably plus defenders. If you can even call Reggie Bullock that and he hasn't even been in the starting lineup for most of the season. And Dorian Finney-Smith, I would say, is a plus. He's a good defender. But aside from that, you don't have much versatility. You don't have much athleticism. You don't have much switchability. And that's kind of where the defense struggles. Not to mention, you don't have someone that can make up for these mistakes. You've really just got not much going for you on the defensive end of the floor. And the few guys that are good defensively, the likes of, say, Reggie Bullock, even Frank Nilakina, what, Sterling Brown, these kind of guys have done absolutely nothing on offense. So there's the catch-22. You've got guys that are better offensively, the likes of Tim Hardaway Jr., who hasn't even really been playing offense well, Jalen Brunson, but they're not doing too much defensively. They're undersized. And then you've got the more athletic, the better defensive guys that aren't doing anything on offense. Yeah, it sounds kind of dire, doesn't it? It does sound kind of dire. Now, I don't think it is all the way dire because offensively, this is a team 
that was the eighth ranked offense last year, the first ranked offense the year before. Even when Luca has played, they've been better than the bottom 10 offense that suggests because of those four games he missed. But they haven't been fantastic offensively. And a lot of this comes down to the fact they're not shooting very well. This is a team that lives and dies by the three. They've been one of the top three-point attempt teams in the league. They've been one of the better three-point shooting teams in the league. And this season, they're towards the bottom in three-point percentage and towards the top in three-point attempts. So you see how that's not really a recipe for success. And some of this comes down to maybe not creating as many open looks, even though they're still creating a good amount. It's probably a little bit down marginally, and Luca has missed some games, which would attribute to that. But even when they're creating open looks... Let's just talk about some individuals because as a team offensively, I think you've still got Luka Doncic. He's not at 100%, but he's still giving you, what, 25, 9, and 9 a night. And he's still one of the best offensive players in basketball. Kristaps Porzingis has been better overall. The two guys that were probably supposed to be your best three-point shooters have been absolutely woeful from three, and that's Reggie Bullock and Tim Hardaway Jr. And I want to start with Reggie Bullock because I know some people probably didn't know a ton about him heading into the season, Mavs fans maybe in particular. I was pretty hyped for this signing. Did I think he was going to move the needle and make them go from wherever they were to a completely different level? No, but I thought this is a good sound signing that makes sense with Luka Doncic. He's coming off a good year in New York for an overachieving team where he shot the ball well. He played good defense. I've seen him play in Detroit, so I know he can shoot the ball. He can come off screens. He can knock down open threes. He can do a lot as a shooter, and he's not going to ask for the ball much. Perfect for Luka Doncic, right? That just makes a ton of sense. It's been bad. It's just been really, really bad. 28% from three, 36% from the field. He's getting good enough looks that he's just not knocking down at all. And while I still do have faith it'll turn because he's someone that has been a 38% career three-point shooter. He shot 44% on volume in Detroit, 41% last year on volume in New York. This season, well, it's just been a mess. And like I said, he's getting pretty good looks. He's getting the looks that you would expect and that you would hope Luka Doncic is creating opportunities. He's just not making shots. He just really isn't. I don't think this is something where he'll shoot 28% for the rest of the season. Otherwise, he might drop out of the rotation at that point in time, but I don't think that'll happen. But if he can't at least start to level this out and start shooting at least like 35% for the rest of the year, well, then the Mavericks are in trouble because they need someone out there that not only can space the floor, but like I said, can also defend because otherwise you might have to put in Jalen Brunson again or Tim Hardaway Jr. And then defensively, it's not doing too well. And like the other guy that I want to talk about, Tim Hardaway Jr. is shooting 32% from the three, under 40% from the field. And he has been their X factor the last two, three seasons. He's been the guy alongside Luka Doncic. You've got Jalen Brunson as well, but he's the, been the biggest shot maker, the biggest three-point shot maker. He's the guy taking those shots outside of Luka, coming off screens. He's got the license to take his, create his own shots. He's got the license to be the heat check kind of guy, and he's consistently been that. I mean, last year in the playoffs, he was their second best player. Says something about how he played, which he was good for some of those games, and also the fact that Luka had absolutely no help, which we already know. But yeah, he's been really underwhelming as well. Similar to Reggie Bullock, he's getting looks that you would expect Hardaway Jr. to make. He's obviously a guy that's affecting the offense more than Reggie Bullock. Reggie Bullock was supposed to be a nice, solid guy that fits the team. Tim Hardaway Jr. is supposed to be a key piece in this offense. As a whole, you look through the whole list, guys are not shooting well. Like I said, this is reminiscent to last season. I remember doing a video on the Mavs this time last year, talking about it, and the numbers back it up, that they weren't shooting well, that they were still creating good looks, and not much has changed in that department, but they weren't knocking down open shots. Are there any other ways they can fix the offense, though? Maybe running some more pick and rolls with Paul Zingas. They've been getting him more post-ups, and that's been effective. He's shooting a good field goal percentage from post-ups. He's not shooting well from the three-point line either. It seems like absolutely no one on this team is, but he's doing better getting to the line, getting post-ups, getting to that elbow spot, and that's been effective. And that's why I was getting higher on this team because we were seeing this from Paul Zingas, and we're still seeing it. He did some of the same things against Indiana, but uh, no one else was scoring at all. Like, I'm pretty sure it took till the second half or something, or like the second quarter at least, for someone else not named Luca or Porzingis to score. That's not good enough. That's not good enough. Like, you've just got guys out there that aren't doing anything but cardio and offense, and... What can you really do to be a top offense if that's the case? Looking for some solutions 
Well, there's a few, I guess you could look to make a trade. I don't know how they make it happen. You've got Jalen Brunson as a piece. Who else is a piece? No one really. Miles Turner, DeMontis Sabonis, one of those guys that they just played would be perfect. That's exactly what you want, particularly Miles Turner, I'd say, for this team. However, they don't have any assets, whether it's a draft pick, but the thing is, if Luke is healthy, if he's playing, even if he's not fully healthy, they're still going to make the playoffs. Like, I can almost guarantee that they're still, what, 12 or 9 when he's played. They're still decent enough to make the playoffs when he's played, and they'll still put up a fight in the first rounds, but that's not getting them anyway. I'll end on a positive and say they're going to turn around the shooting at some point in time. They've done this before. They did it last year. I'm pretty sure they did it for an extended period of time the year before as well. This is what teams do. Teams are very reliant on the three-point shot, and sometimes when that shot isn't falling, well, then they struggle, and that's what's happening with Dallas. So once that shot starts falling, they're going to start winning games again. I still don't think that's to the level that they need to be, even if their shot is falling, but, you know, I don't know what the solution is. I'm going to be completely honest. I don't know. But anyways, I guess the solution is to start making more threes, and then hopefully, hopefully something comes from that.